Hello. <clears throat> Usually before I start recording videos, I talk to myself, but I didn't do that. Now it sounds whack, it, meaning my voice. <clears throat> Hello, people of well. I'm Iris. Nice to virtually meet you. And today I am going to try to follow a makeup tutorial from 1951. Okay, listen, I know this trend is like hecka old, but. I procrastinate a lot and I already did. I tried following a makeup video. First it was the trend. I tried following so-and-so's makeup video. Then it was, I tried following so-and-so's makeup video with only the voiceover. But like three months before, before that started being a trend, I did the opposite. I did, I tried following a makeup video without the sound on because I don't know. I thought backwards. I could have been the trendsetter there is all I'm trying to say. Okay, but no, the makeup clip I have today is actually from a movie. It's actually known by a lot of things. It's from 1951. In the UK, it's called Why Men Leave Home, but it was released as Secrets of Beauty in the US, but it was going to be released as for women only, and oh my god, I watched this movie, and I thought it was gonna be really, really sexist, like, a woman should know her place. It's called Four Women Only, and I read the synopsis. I can't find the original synopsis I was reading, but the original one I was reading, it was like, their marriage falls apart, and the daughter enlists the help of a makeup artist to help save their marriage. So I thought it was gonna be like, really sexist, and like, the woman belongs in the kitchen doing their housework, and you must be pretty and ready to love your husband whenever you can. There was supposed to be a make in there with make love with but i actually watched it it wasn't as sexist as i thought it would be yes it did have those themes but not as heavily thrown in as i thought hey butt munch maybe it's not as sexist as you thought because it was just a really sexist time back there actually i have no say on if it was sexist or not but speculation is that it didn't have to be as overbearingly sexist as i thought it was going to be because it's just kind of the normal to be sexist back then. I won't be watching it again, but if you want to watch it, I left the link in the description, so go ahead, check it out. I don't care for, nor do I not care for, the movie. I neither dislike it nor like it. It was just part of the research for this video. Wait, but then I said I have a favorite part, so am I a liar? Hmm. My favorite part of the movie is when Marty and Ruth, Marty and Ruth, they're having troubles in their marriage and they have this daughter ginger and ginger goes to get a telegram telegram from miss ginger waldron that's me sign here hey why are we whispering who's sick nobody oh that's too bad huh <laughs> huh <laughs> i don't know why i find it so funny okay anyways okay so it wasn't that she wasn't doing her motherly and housekeeping it was that the husband felt she was all mother slash housekeeper and not enough wife and she's like but you never complain and then he was like well i got the hot for my secretary well he didn't say it like that but that was basically what's going on and when i was looking this up okay i did a lot of research if you don't want to hear me talk about this movie and just want to get into the, the following the tutorial go to this timestamp okay Let's get to it. In this movie, the wife goes, eventually goes to a beauty convention to try to get her husband more attracted to her. And that is where the makeup tutorial part comes in. And at the beauty convention thing, Ern Westmore is a real makeup artist that worked there. I think the earliest he might have started working on movies is in the 20s-ish. This was in 51, so he has 30 years of experience. This was the most in-depth 1950s, uh, well it's early 1950s, makeup tutorial I could find and it ended abruptly when I found it on YouTube. I'm like, that's weird. So then I looked into it, found out it was from a movie. But when I was looking up why men leave home, there was a movie in 1924 called the same thing, why men leave, Ho why men leave home, based on a 1922 play. And I thought, oh, maybe this movie is based off that movie, based off that play, or one or the other. But then I looked up the synopsis of the movie. I couldn't find the synopsis or summary or literally any details about the play. I could find a poster promoting the play, 
But I couldn't find anything else about the play except stuff about the author. Author. The synopsis of the movie is John and Irene Emerson's marriage begins well enough but is not looking forward before John becomes less attentive. Feeling neglected, Irene spends more time with her girlfriends and John consequently falls prey to vamping at the wiles of his secretary, Jean Ralston. When John comes home from the theater smelling like Jean's perfume, Irene procures a divorce. John then marries Jean. Grandma Sutton cleverly maneuvers John and Irene into her house and has it quarantined. They realize they love each other. John divorces Jean, Jean remarries Irene, and it takes her on her second honeymoon. Okay, so there's similar themes. Marriages are going things. They do threaten for divorce in 1951, why men leave home, but they don't divorce. This is probably way too confusing. Ginger, their daughter, won a talent competition to get her into Hollywood. At their stay in Hollywood, doing screen tests for the movie they wanted to get into, she met the makeup artist, Ern Westmore, and that's how she gets in contact. Anyways, Mr. Westmore then helps wife, Ginger's mom, Ruth, become more pretty and win her man back. In the movie, the secretary is having a serious confrontation of whether or not she is having an affair with the woman in the fur with the dead animal sprawled across her husband. And she's all strict and tight until this one line. Mrs. Waldron, I'll come right to the point also. And I won't pull any punches. In the year and a half I've worked in this office, I've been nothing more to your husband than a well-trained nurse. And now you come here accusing me. You make me feel like a character in a play, the other woman. You know, the type that's always telling the other woman's side of it. See, even it's like, you know, and then you come here and make me feel like a character in a play, the other woman. And she's like looking out into the audience too, as if she's in a play. So is that a reference to the 1922 play, Why Women Leave Home by that guy that I forgot to mention and write down? Is it? Is it not? There's similar themes within husband, wife, not getting along, secretary becomes love interest, of husband, they get back together at the end. Is it or is it not? So for the 1924 movie, this was on one of their posters that was promoting it. Sweethearts, wives, husband, you can learn how to win and keep love and how to renew romance. That is waning by hints you were, they did not have good ink grammar. By the hints, or maybe I'm just reading this wrong. Hints you receive in this picture. It tells you why men leave home. It also teaches you how to keep them there. And this thing, you'll see, it was really in depth. So I'm saying, this one teaches us how to keep the men there with the beauty, how to win the men back with the makeup. That one, I haven't watched it because it's an old tech movie and I didn't really search for it. Okay, okay, into the makeup before I run out of space because it's been 37 minutes, what? No. Oh, it's only been 19. I was like, I was not rambling for 37 minutes. I know that all of you are here to see if I can prove what I have always contended, that there is no woman in the world who can't be made to look more beautiful. To understand the secrets of beauty, glamor, and personality, we must first review the simple fundamentals such as the proper application of makeup, the proper distribution of color, the proper redistribution of hair, the arch of a brow and the shape of a mouth. And by applying these simple fundamentals, a woman gains complete command and control of herself. He doesn't go into all of these. Like I said, it's a mo it was in a movie. <laughs> and they're not gonna have a whole convention panel just shoved into the movie. They only do it for the oval face. I don't know what face I have, but I'm going to pretend I have a triangle because, or or should I just pretend I have an oval? Because I was going to pretend I have a triangle because along with the movie, the 1951 movie, Ern Westmore released Secrets of Beauty the book featuring the same models used in the movie. I don't have the book, but I have some pictures of the book. And in the picture, in the book, we have a chart that he uses in the show. I mean, in the movie, right here in the book, and a little more do's and don'ts, but those are mostly for hair. And honey, I'm not doing anything with my hair, so maybe I should just follow the oval shape one. And my oval shape, my triangle, like I certainly think I'm a triangle when I smile. See? But then I was looking online and some people put the triangle this way 
and some people put the triangle that way and I just don't know my face shape so if you guys could please help me out I might be doing the wrong one in this video but if you guys can please help me out and decide my face shape this is what I look like I'm gonna put on a neutral expression in three but not the one I use for my driver's lacing because oh goody golly I look like a serial killer but okay neutral expression in three two one okay please help me on last Saturday afternoon, we selected five women from a group provided by your committee. They represent the five basic types of faces, namely the oval. Oh no, I do not have an oval face. My cheeks, see look, if I just, if I just lost some weight in my face and will end overall, because to lose weight in your face, you gotta lose. You can't target weight loss, I think. You lose it all over. Mm -hmm. Then I would have an oval, see? Bring some of that chubbiness in. No, my cheekbones are still a little too high. Mm -hmm. I think I'm a triangle. The round, the square, the oblong, and the triangle. Right? We have a similar face shape. Me and her. Right, 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 right. We'll take the oval type first, since the oval is the ideal face. Using you as our model, we'll depict for this fine audience the proper application of makeup and hairstyling. The first question comes from a salon in Des Moines, Iowa. Quote, is there any particular brand of cosmetic which we should use? I'm glad that question has come up first, because it's to be definitely understood that I personally do not recommend any particular brand of cosmetic. Any nationally advertised product is all right. Ladies, it's not the brand of cosmetic that creates glamour. It's the manner in which you apply it. Use any True. brand of cosmetic that you choose to use and enjoy. Which means I can use ColourPop. This is the ColourPop, no filter sticks. In the shade Medium Dark 130C. And I have no idea what he's applying the foundation with. When he mentioned foundation right here, Here's a question from the Nancy Lee Beauty Shop in Seattle, Washington. How many types of foundation base are there? There are three. There is cake makeup. There is liquid makeup. And there is cream base. This is pan stick cream base, which I'm using on the oval face. He doesn't say what he's applying it with, so I'm just gonna use my fingers. I think it's just a powder puff. He did use his fingers to demonstrate what a cream base is, I think he calls it. And the only powder puff I have is this, which is a, I have a lot more information on this, but I am not going to bore you to death. It's a vintage powder compress thing. And this is the only powder puff I have, but I want to use it for powder. I don't really want to get it dirty with cream foundation. Listen, I really wish I could tell you that I somehow disinfected. Good morning. <laughs> oh, look at little sleepy band. <laughs> I wish I could say that I somehow disinfected that in some way, but literally i just found that around my house nobody <laughs> in my house knows where it came from knows anything about it except about when i researched it online but luckily i didn't catch some like rare disease from it and my skin is perfectly fine i don't have a rash <laughs> i really wish i could tell you that i disinfected it or some shit <laughs> oops sorry no cursing some stuff oh i need a mirror I need a mirror. I don't have a mirror. Why does everything have to become a song with me? Just why? <laughs> oh. Well. Not an exact match. But then again, was anybody really matching in the 50s? I don't know. I wasn't. I'm just going to put this straight on my face to save some time. I wasn't alive. This might be too much. I haven't used this before. I got it specifically for this video and while I was shopping, 
for this video. It was around Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and for some reason, apparently everybody wanted black and brown pencils, like eye pencils. So I was gonna get some real like eye pencils, wooden ones with the sharpened, like a standard eye pencil, but instead I got gel ones instead because they were all sold out. I'm just gonna blend this around my face, with my fingers, because I don't have a powder puff. Awesome background music. When using a cream or liquid foundation base, you must always use cream rouge. Then dry rouge may be applied after powdering. Okay, so I don't have cream rouge, but I have this from my other video, which is most likely going out after this video, but I already recorded it, but I have to re-record segments, because you'll see, you'll see. Anyways, it's like DIY rouge. <laughs> it's coconut oil and then Crayola crayon. It was supposed to be lipstick, but now I just use it as a blush. So based on what he says right here about the oval face and where to apply cream rouge, when he's pointing at that chart, the rouge has been blended back up to the temple, down under the eye, slightly down the cheek line. We also catch a glimpse of this chart in the triangle face shape. A similar chart also appears in the book. I tried my best to guesstimate where the rouge would go, based on his explanation for oval. There's no way to tell how much there is on there, cause it's in black and white. This salon operator would like to know what the basic colors in eyeshadow should be. That's a good question. First of all, there should be no fads in makeup. In order to create the illusion of glamour, there are hard, fast rules which must be adhered to. So far as I'm concerned, we need only two shades of eyeshadow, brown and blue-gray. I have this blue but I don't think it's gray enough. And earlier when I was swatching it, it actually has a little glitter in it and it's kind of shimmery. I'm gonna take the sugar palette, the shade, ooh, they didn't say what type of brown. I have a couple browns to choose from here. I think I'm gonna take like the most neutral brown. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> I'm a fraud. I can't tell if these have shimmers in them because, oh my God. <laughs> Oops, that's just from holding my palette. Because these other ones have shimmers in it, I accidentally mixed them. Or if these shades actually have shimmers in them. I'm gonna take Hot Cocoa. And once again, I don't know if he's using a brown or a blue in there, because black and white. It looks like he's just using a paintbrush, so that's what I'll be using. Also, wasn't sterilized in any way, shape, or form. I mean, from aside from washing, it, like rinsing it in the paint water, you can literally still see the green on it. Ooh, this is too big. I'm gonna get a smaller brush. Still a paintbrush, though. And above everything else, it must be remembered that eyeshadow at all times is to be applied sparingly. There were many questions that in regard to you. Sparingly, you say? Well, um, Hot Cocoa and I disagree. Doesn't look too bad, right? Okay, I'm just gonna take a little bit off. I'm just gonna blend this out a little more. These are the eyes so far. Don't mind my eyebrows, I wanna get them done, but just haven't gotten around to it. Is it necessary to outline the eye for good makeup? It is just as important to outline an eye as it is to frame a picture. Remember, the eyes are the windows of your soul. However, you should never use an eyebrow pencil on your lower lid, and never use anything but a shade of brown. Black is taboo and only tends to aid you and harden your expression. You hear that girl with cat lines with with black eyeliner? You you naughty 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 taboo little girls. <gasps> I broke the tip. Scolding people on their eye makeup. Here I go and break the tip. See, I was never good at black eyeliner. 
because it was so taboo. It was just not in my good faith to do it. I did it again. See, I'm trying to use it like it's a regular pencil, but it's not. That's why it keeps breaking. Now, friends, let's stop for a moment and examine this makeup to see if everything is well blended. First, let's view the overall picture. A clean hairline. Uh-uh. Ooh. No. Got a lot of frizzies. The base is blended well down under the chin, around the sides of the neck, and the cheek rouge is properly blended. Now, let's clean up under the eyes. This is the region we'll powder first. That's a lot of powder. Okay, so I don't think they had translucent powder in the 50s. Or maybe they did, I don't know. I don't really know what color powder, that could just be pure white. But I'm going to be using the ColourPop No Filter Setting Powder in the, tr in the shade Translucent. That's not enough. And <laughs> I'm gonna just be putting it in this little compact just cause, I don't know, more vintagey. Just fixing my makeup. Well, really, not fi just fixing it. Oops. I am getting powder everywhere, except on my face. <coughs> Whew. I should not have worn black for this part. The shirt underneath this is also black. They didn't say what color powder, okay? I look scary. This is frightening. Don't try to remove your surplus powder with your puff. You should always use a powder brush. Do you recommend any certain type of powder puff? The only powder puff that I recommend is a clean one. Okay, those just look like baby hair brushes. I don't really have anything. <laughs> I mean, the closest thing that I have to that is probably my, <laughs> my face thing, my face washer thingy. So I'm just going to use, uh, this isn't really a powder brush, it's more of a kabuki powder brush. I'm just going to use that because it does have the flat end like they're using on their brush. So I'm just going to use this one. Brush the powder off of the forehead first, then the nose, then over the eyes. Down under the chin, but with upward strokes. Never brush the cheeks down. Always brush them up. Next, you brush the surplus powder from your brows. Ew, I hate this because I have such dry skin right here. The way the powders are sticking to it makes me look all scaly. I hate how cameras make everything look better. Like, let me show you how stupid I look. Like, ugh. And also, this makeup did nothing for my under eye bags except when they tried to brighten them up with the powder. The powder that barely went over or under my eyes cause I'm an idiot. And here is the time to wash the surplus powder from around your eyes. Simply saturate a Q-tip with water. You'll find it lends freedom to the expression of your eyes. Many women fail to remove the surplus powder from around their eyes, and that's a bad mistake. It's taking off a lot of my eye makeup. But then again, they did say go subtle with it, so... It should be remembered that the eyebrow is a very important feature of the face. It expresses every human emotion. Happiness, sadness, joy, whatever the case may be. And a properly arched eyebrow is a valuable asset to every woman's beauty. He's got a brush, I got a spoolie. Let's start the eyebrow directly above the inside corner of the eye. Create the proper arch above the brow. 
before this one. It doesn't go back down, but I can't, I'm not just gonna shave off my eyebrow to get that effect. So I'm just gonna keep it like that. See, this one's more closer to what it's supposed to look like. And that one makes a lot more sense. This eyebrow, it looks like I have more space in between my eyes. And when you're dragging this one down, you lose a lot of that space, so. I'm learning. I mean, I've been knowing that, but. Then, brush up to the arch. Then, brush down. In mascara, there are any number of tones of browns and blacks. Never use any artificial shades. I don't usually use this. This is Wet n Wild Mega Plump. I really can't even tell you what this is going to do, if it's really going to give me Mega Plump lashes. <laughs> you know, this is not the first time I've done this. Screw it, just pretend it's not there. I was not prepared for how big this is. Dumb hand-eye coordination, or the lack of it. Maybe I can just cover it with some powder. Yeah, like that'll work. Just pretend it's not there. I, I am utterly sorry that I am using this as a microphone, but I also am utterly sorry that I messed up. I am not about to go through that whole process again just for this spot. So just compare this side, just here. Take this side of my face, duplicate it. Even though this one has the better eyebrow, use this eyebrow for both sides. I know you can do that. I know you can edit that. Good. Next, we apply dry rouge. And never apply dry rouge over a moist base until you have powdered it. I prefer applying dry rouge with a brush. It prevents spottiness and blends so much more beautifully. The dry rouge, AKA blush I have is pink. I don't know what color they're using. Listen, I'm an idiot. Rouge means red in French, so it's probably red. I'm just taking that kabuki brush again. Always remember to powder after you've applied your dry rouge. We got a powder again? For the successful application of lip rouge, once again, I am using a paintbrush. Women must follow a few simple rules. Just the same as baking a cake. The first and most important rule is the proper selection of color. Oh, color. Like you mean the color that this video is not in? Never use lip rouge with blue tones. They're cold and hard. Never match your lip rouge to your nails. But you may, if you choose, match your nails to your lips. See that your lips are perfectly free of other makeup. Remember that oil and water do not mix. Your lips must be thoroughly dry to prevent your lip rouge from rolling. This is what I'm doing. I'm taking it from the... Almost said horse's mouth. I mean, yeah, I am taking it from the horse's mouth. Earn Westmore himself. Also, I couldn't get the powder off on my lips, and my lips are hecka dry. That's what they wanted, right? Okay, okay, I cheated. I wasn't gonna tell you, but I cheated. I just put this directly to my lips. I'm sorry, I cheated. They didn't show them doing that, I'm, but I'm so sorry. Okay, after many layers later, here we go. Oh, that's not right. Oh, shoot, this is matte. I just realized that, I don't think did they even have matte back then? I have no idea. Be sure you blot your lips with cleansing tissue. Uh, by cleansing tissue, I hope you mean paper towel. This will make your lips stay on longer and look more natural. I mean, it's matte. <laughs> now then, here is a properly made up oval face. <gasps> it's the end, oh my God. Oh, wow, why didn't you guys tell me my bra strap was on display? I'm so sorry. Mom, I promise I'm not a whore. This is what it looks like. Just forget that that exists and okay. Overall thoughts, I don't know. It just looks like normal makeup to me. Besides being so pale and matte, it's really, really matte. 
I look fine. Like I would go out like this, I guess. And besides that, that kind of looks stupid because that was myself. But you know what I don't get about the 1950s? This is high from female. Oh my god, boys wearing makeup when most of the makeup artists, not the 1950s, just in general, people are female. Oh my god, boys wearing makeup, but like. So I just don't understand why it would be so bad that they started applying the skills onto their own face. You know what I mean? Anyways, have a nice day. Keep doing what you love and peace.